Okay, now I'd like to briefly show you a bit of the website itself. This is what it looks like if you just logged into OpenSNP. And you see here uh, those uh, little badges which you get for publishing your genotyping results, creating new phenotypes, entering phenotypes, for example, for entering 20 additional phenotypes, stuff like this. And you directly see how many different genotypes, or phenotypes, sorry, have already been entered, which you didn't provide any information about. For example, your SAT scores on math or verbal or writing. And I don't have any of those because here in Germany we don't take SATs. And hypertriglycidemia, I don't know my levels, for example, so I can't enter it. But if I haven't entered it, or I would know it, I can just enter it here and let's say I knew this would uh, be also very high, about 500 milligrams. Then I could just start and it suggests what I could enter because it's already in the database. So let's get back to the start page. You also can see the variations you have already entered in OpenSNP, so for example my skin color, if I'm lactose intolerant or not, my hair type, my height, and stuff like this. And yeah, you also see your messages and replies to the comments you've made on OpenSNP so far. So let's just say at those variations and the one I've not entered yet, there's a phenotype missing which I haven't provided or which hasn't been asked about on OpenSNP so far. Then I can just click on those phenotypes here in the top level and here again I see all the phenotypes which have been asked about so far, how many users have entered them and when they were created initially and I can just create a new one. So let's say I would like to know what other people have for their hair color. Then I can just go on, type it and I see oh about hair color there's already a question I maybe missed it and then I can click here and then of course I can give a description if hair color wasn't already in the OpenSNP database I could say what natural hair color do you have example answers could be blonde brown black or red and then I say I am a natural blonde and create the phenotype and then it would be created and other people could enter their information about their hair color as well. So this is quite simple. What is important here, the variation down here, you should only enter your own variation and not all possible answers. And as we have seen about the, uh, in the example of phenotypes already available, it's the free text fields so you can enter whatever you like if you are going to enter the phenotypic variation. So let's go back to the hyperdiaglycidemia here. So I can enter whatever I want. So if it's uh, if I would knew it and I could enter low, and it would be less than 100 milligram per deciliter, so I could submit it, and it would be listed here on the phenotype page as well. So what we also can find on this uh, page are on this phenotype page for an individual phenotype is here again the description other users who already have entered it so two users have entered their variation about this so far and if I want to download all genotype uh, phenotype genotyping files of users who have entered this specific variation at a given phenotype I can just click here for example I want to download all the information all genotype information of users who have a very high, uh, very high hypertriglycidemia level. So I can just click here, download genotyping files of all corresponding users, and then the download starts. I can download those information, and here I will get an email which includes the link to a zip file which includes those genotypes. But I also can, if I'm really interested in hypertriglycidemia, can use an RSS feed. So here's the RSS feed, which includes all genotyping files of users who have entered any variation about this hypertriglycidemia. So I can just add this to my Google Reader 
and I will see whenever a new genotype has been uploaded or if there's a user who has uploaded its genotype and entered this variation about this phenotype. This makes it easy to keep track of which files you might need new for your studies. So yeah, this is it about the phenotypes and once again on the phenotypes here you can enter. So another interesting thing of course are the genotypes. If I click on genotypes here on the top level, I get here, you see how many users have uploaded their data so far, which file format this is in, and this is mainly 23andMe right now, but also some family tree DNA data has been uploaded. And well, I can just click here on individual files and download them if I'm interested in individual files. For example, here the Denisova hominin. This is an uh, fossil and it's an ancient DNA example and I think it's about 41,000 years old. So if I want to see the genotyping results of this old individual, I can click here and get the variation of this fossil individual. So again, there's an RSS feed if you're interested in getting notification about any new genotyping files, you can use this. And what's also interesting is you can get a complete dump of all the data. This includes not only all genotyping files, but this also includes a spreadsheet with all phenotypic variations those users which up have uploaded their genotypes have entered so far. So you get all the data you could possibly want, which is available on OpenSNP as a single download. Okay, so this is for entering and downloading phenotype, uh, genotypes and phenotypes in a simple way and keeping track of them. Let's say you are interested in specific SNPs, you can easily click on the SNPs up here, again in the top level navigation, and you see a table which includes all, I think it's nearly two million different SNPs which are in the database. If you are logged in, you will see your own genotype for all those SNPs, and if you don't have it, well, this wasn't tested by 23andMe, obviously, and what you also see is on which chromosome it's located and at which position on this chromosome it lies. And we also have this nice little ranking feature and this is used to sort the table initially. So you see the ranking here is in description, it reflects how many information we have mined from the databases, so from Snipedia, the Public Library of Science at Mendeley. And you will get every SNP will get five points for every Snipedia entry about the SNP because it's already humanly manually curated and it's a summary so it's really interesting to read for you. Then there are two points for each public library of science paper which we find because it's open access so everybody who has not a subscription for this journal still can read it without any problems and you will still get one point for a paper which is mined at Mendeley because you might not have access to it so it might be not that interesting for a user who hasn't university access to publications. So let's click here on the highest ranking. We have 45 points for this. And this snip again leads you to this page. You see the basic information again, your own genotype. You will see the frequencies, how many people have my genotype or have other genotypes and how other LA frequencies at this snip. Then down here you see the different information sources. So you can see this is my genotype AT. I have a 1.3 times the risk for type 2 diabetes and for obesity. And if I click on this, I'll directly go to the Snipedia and can see about the SNP, the different genotypes, stuff like this. Okay, so if I click here on the Public Library of Science, I get the publications from the different authors, their titles, when they were published, and how many people have already read it on the Public Library of Science. So for example, this the first one is quite new, it's published last year. It's about the variance and inflammatory marker throughout a broad range of body mass index, which is again obesity related. And if I'm interested, I can just click on the title and it will directly take me to the Public Library of Science where I can read the full text of this article. So this is quite nice if, you, oh, if you're interested in reading more about this and what they found out about the SNP. 
Similarly for Mendeley, you get again the authors, the titles, the number of readers on Mendeley. And if you click on the titles, it will take you to the Mendeley page of this paper where you can read the abstract and related research, stuff like this, if you really want to dig into a single snip. And what's also nice is, if it's an open access paper, like here again, it's on the Public Library of Science, it's a similar one, then what we get here is this open access logo, and if we have a digital object identifier, you can just click on it, and again, you go straight to the publication, and you can read it if it's open access. So, yeah, this works quite well. And, of course, you can read about other users. You can see those who are in bold face have, again, my genotype at this position for this SNP. So I can see, okay, Samantha has not my genotype, but, well, who has here? Mark Davis shares my genotype information. And you can comment on the different SNPs, for example, here's one. So Philip said, Here's an interesting paper. It states that the risk for obesity related to the SNP can be attenuated by roughly 30% if people carrying it regularly exercise. So you could well get some tips how to counter the effects of those specific SNPs, which might be interesting for you. Um, well, so far about the SNPs. You can search for them and well, which, what is interesting out here is our search feature. So let's say you're interested in diabetes. You just search for diabetes, press enter, and well, you get users because John entered in his profile that he's interested in diabetes. You will get phenotypes. So there is a type 2 diabetes phenotype which you can enter your information about. There's a comment. John commented on, hey, here there's information about type 2 diabetes, and again you find all the publications. So this table shows you the publications for which SNP they are, so you see here diabetes in adults, type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. You can see this SNP is associated with diabetes. You can see when it was published, the number of readers, and so on. So it works like the SNP pages, but the other way around. And the same here for the Snipedia entries, you find all the different SNPs which, and genotypes which have been associated with some type 2 diabetes or diabetes risk in general. So you can use OpenSNP also to find out which SNPs might be useful for some kind of disease. So uh, for another example, let's say breast cancer. There should be also some results. Again, here one user stated he's interested in breast cancer, and again we get all the different publications and which SNPs they are, or which to which SNPs they belong to, if you're interested in it. So this is the basic functionality of OpenSNP on the web frontend which you can use. And I've also shown you some examples of how you can use OpenSNP to get data out of our database and use it for your yeah, your research or stuff like this.